Today we will be evaluating oxygen absorbers. Are you being ripped off? Hey Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kylene. And today we are going to talk about oxygen absorbers. And they are actually a fantastic tool because their main purpose is to remove the oxygen from a sealed container, which prevents oxidation, and it also prevents any insects from infesting and ruining your stored foods. So we're going to talk about what they are, how they work, and most importantly, how you know if they're doing the job or if you're being ripped off. John, talk to us about what are oxygen absorbers. Okay, oxygen absorbers are little packets of iron powder. And sometimes there will be some other additives, either some salts. Sometimes they'll put uh, activated carbon in, depending on the purpose. But our purpose is just to get the oxygen out. So we don't really care about that other stuff. The iron powder is what we're after here. And that iron powder will interact in the, in the package to rust, basically. And that will pull all the oxygen down to 0.01%. So essentially, no, nothing gone. left. It's all the oxygen is absorbed. Even if there is a tiny, tiny bit, it's not enough for anything to grow or the oxidation to occur. This is ideal for things like grain and beans, um, powdered milk, dehydrated foods, and freeze-dried foods. Anything that has a moisture content of 10% or less, and ideally, is low in fat. Well, all this little packet does is it removes the oxygen. So in that container, you are still going to have nitrogen and other, a few other gases in there. The nitrogen isn't gonna hurt your food at all. So that can be a little bit tricky when it comes to knowing whether or not it's doing its job. And I think it's useful to point out that our air that we breathe is basically 79% nitrogen. So the oxygen is a smaller piece Sometimes people get confused as to thinking it doesn't work, but probably it is working really well, right? Yeah. And, and, and are there things that shouldn't be, you shouldn't put an oxygen absorber in? Anything that's moist. You never want to put an oxygen absorber in moist foods because you, there is the risk of botulism. We're only using it in dried goods. Okay. And, and sugar and salt, we wouldn't put it oh, in, right? Yeah, because if you put an oxygen absorber in either sugar or salt, it will turn it rock hard. And you don't need it we don't because want that. both neither sugar nor salt are susceptible to oxidation and bugs don't tend to like to hang out in them. I ordered 500 cc oxygen absorbers, but look at the difference in size. That's what struck me when I first looked at them. It's like, These are whoa, all there are cc. some that are really small and we're going to do some measurements, both weight, you know, because I of love to course, measure stuff. She, of course. That gets her all excited. No, it doesn't get her excited too, but it gets me <laughs> excited to measure things. So I want to know which ones really work well. And so we're going to do yeah. some pretty good experimenting. We are not being paid to do this by anybody. We're not promoting yeah. them. I will leave a link to our favorites, but this we paid for all these oxygen absorbers, including some that I'm pretty sure aren't going to work very well because of the size. So the first thing you want to do when you look at an oxygen absorber, let's talk about how we figure out the quality of the packaging. We can get oxygen absorbers, a hundred of them in one package. But for us, we're, we're not commercial food storage people, right? We're only going to use a few at a time. I do use a lot of oxygen absorbers because when I freeze dry food, I like to always make sure that I put it in the jar and as well as vacuum sealing it but I only use a little bit at a time. So I don't want a package of a hundred. In here, we've got some like this one that's packaged in tens, which is yeah, great. And this reasonable. one is five. Yeah. And a lot of times when you're going online, you can decide how many you want in each individual pack. One of the things about these is that there should be an oxygen indicator on this to show you that there's not oxygen in here, right? That these have not been exposed to oxygen and so I would look for that. Some of these packages have them and some, and don't. some don't. Yeah, and which I thought was very interesting. I thought they all would have that in because that gives us a comfort that, we know okay, good. this is good. You can kind of tell by how flexible the package is. If they've done their job, then they're gonna be kind of crusty and, and hard to bend. In their new condition, they're very flexible because it's just that powder in there that's not bound to each other and isn't, uh, hasn't hardened up, so. Yeah, and actually we have a video from quite a while ago where we did where we had one of those big packages with a lot 
and it got exposed and you, you can totally tell that they are not going to work. And so I'll leave a link to that just so that you can see. But that is one of the things that we look for. As we were comparing these, there's a, there's a huge difference in the quality, like the thickness of the plastic that this one is in versus this one's pretty this thin. One. And this gives me a lot of comfort too, having these heavier packages. Yeah. It just feels better. Now, whether it makes the difference, I don't, I don't know. But I, I like the fact that it's a heavier package, which means it's not going to puncture as easily or get torn as easily. And plastic will always have a slow transmission of oxygen over time, right? That the is true. The thicker the plastic, the slower that transmission. So this thin one isn't going to last as long in your storage or in your cupboard as this. And uh, actually, according to the manufacturer, they usually say that you should use these within a couple years. We're going to open all of these and show you, we'll evaluate them all so that you can see what we think of them. But this is how I do my oxygen absorbers always. As soon as this bag is opened, I'm going to remove them and I'll stick the little, okay, I don't know if you can see this. See how this was exposed to oxygen? It was like a pinkish color and now it's turning dark already real fast. So I'm going to stick this in here and immediately if we weren't doing the experiment i would vacuum seal this but this is going to be fine for just now as small a container as i can and then we'll seal this up and the oxygen absorbers when they start to work they will actually warm up a little bit that's one of the things that tells you that the oxygen absorber is working so here we have the seven different packets and and you can see there's one that's larger than all the rest and then there's three that are kind of nearly the same size and then there's three that are really small so it's going to be interesting I, I didn't think there would be that much variation in you know if you're if you're using a 500 cc absorber that they would have about the same size package and about the same weight and there's quite a range of weights all the way from four grams on one of them clear up to 15.9 grams so i can't believe Just, that they're they're all equivalent that these are all 500s something's off there. Now it's interesting because I had talked to Pat Fresh USA once and, and just asked them, why is yours so much bigger than this other brand? And they said that they intentionally three times the size of the oxygen absorber to allow for any kind of error and make sure that their customer is taken care of. And so I, I wonder if that says something about, you know, the company and what they're trying to do, or, you know, if the small one is just they are rated for 500 cc that is what they absorb and if you leave it out for any period of time it's already going to have absorbed some of that i don't know but we don't have any fancy equipment to be able to tell you for sure if the oxygen has been absorbed but what we are going to do is we're going to put one in each one of these quart jars now they are rated a 500 cc oxygen absorber should remove all of the oxygen out of a gallon. So there is not, there's not gonna be anything in here. And so, you know, you've got to take into that account, but I think it'd be a really interesting experiment just to see which ones will suck this lid down and which ones won't. One thing that's important to me when we package something, it's nice to know that there's even a, after a, we open it, oh. we can close it back up and this thing's gonna reactivate. Like, especially with my freeze dried foods, the celery. Yeah, yeah. So I'll dump part of it out and then when I, close it back, it'll actually reseal because I use the bigger oxygen absorbers and that way all of it lasts longer. When the oxygen is gone, the chemical reaction stops. When yeah. the oxygen is present again, it reactivates. And so until that oxygen absorber is exhausted, it's gonna work for you. But you do have to have to have to have an airtight container. Glass jars are fabulous that way. Number 10 cans are fabulous. Mylar bags are really good, but just a regular Tupperware, you're not going to get quite that. Yeah, you won't have the airtight. same kind of seal. Yeah, as you would with some of these others. But I usually put an oxygen absorber in some of my stuff in the pantry, right? That I just, mm -hmm. it's like I, I'm not going to store it long term, but I want to make sure there's no bugs in it to start out with. So I'll, I'll do it in some of my lock and lock containers right and i know it's yeah. only gonna do the first time but it'll kill those critters so let's get experimenting we are going to use mylar bags these are just super plain these are seven mil 
We are going to put the exact same amount of oats in each one of these bags. And then we're gonna watch them and see how much they shrink up. Now, again, oxygen is only 21% of your air, right? So you might not always get that vacuum look. But I have a sneaking suspicion from using these in the past that they won't give me any vacuum in here. We wanna at least see that some of the container has shrunk up a little bit, but we're gonna do an experiment. We re put some uh, multiples of some of these smaller ones just to see if maybe they had more oomph, if they would have worked. So I don't know, it's an experiment. We'll get back to you either tomorrow or the next day and let you know exactly what happens. Here we are back five days later after we started this experiment and it's actually been a fun experiment. And I think we've learned some things. A lot. So first of all, we left these oxygen absorbers out and they are hard and crunchy as you would expect them to be. We did a few different things. One of the first things we did was to put an oxygen absorber in a quart jar. These are 500 cc. All of them are, even though their sizes are all different. What we would expect with a 500 cc oxygen absorber, which is bit large enough for a gallon, we would expect that it should very quickly suck down the lid and be fine. Um, some of these actually pull down faster than others, but they all sealed. So all of yeah. them, the 500 cc, passed in these jars. And, now, and we have to recognize that these are empty jars. So uh, normally when we're doing something in a bag, it's some of that volume is being taken up by product. And now this is interesting. These are quart size Mylar bags. And this was actually a control. And you can see how it's soft yeah, just... and squishy. This is just like when we put this rice in here. But with these, all of the oxygen absorbers worked just fine in these because it's a quart. Now remember, 500 cc, you only need between 100 and 150 cc for a quart size bag. So these were all oversized, so we would expect them all to work. But now let's look at the gallon bags and see what we learned. Now, this is the more interesting part of this experiment. Um, I think this is more telling. These are gallon-sized Mylar bags, and these are all the same. We measured the amount of oats that went in them, so a 500 cc oxygen absorber should have been ideal. But what we discovered is like this one, while it sucked in tiny bit, this one just didn't work well. The next one, you can see this one sucked in a little bit, but not a ton. And likewise on this one, it's pulled in a little bit, and but not to the same extent that some yeah. of these others. This was interesting to me, but all of the ones that had issues were the smaller sizes. Like this size, it was fine for the quart size bag, but it's rated as 500 cc for this gallon size bag and it just didn't work. So what we did is then we did one of the same number three, but we put two oxygen absorbers in it. So with two, with double, which was a, what they say is a thousand cc, this gallon size bag did just fine. And this one that has three, now you're talking. Now it's like really sucked in. This one, has four, and I can't tell a difference really between the three, the four, and the five. Yeah, they're all pulled right? in they're all, pretty good. We don't have the equipment to actually measure how much oxygen is in here, and so we're doing the best we can. And quite frankly, air is, what, about 20% oxygen? Yeah. yeah. And so we're only thinking that 20% should be absorbed. So sometimes it really would be okay to have a little bit you know, not, not this huge tight vacuum sealed look and all the oxygen could be removed. But for us as lay people, as we're looking at this, we're saying, hmm, if oxygen absorbers only remove the oxygen, then how come putting more then oxygen absorbers in it made it look like this? This was just a little bit disturbing to me because Theoretically, it should have, with one, it should have taken care of it. Uh, the fact that two was better and three was better, uh, like I say, three, four, and five are about the same, says, okay, there was still oxygen in this one and this one because these others, and we did this as closely as we could, tried to do them all exactly the same. So the, the variation should be extremely minor. 
but the difference was significant. It was interesting because now nobody is sponsoring this. I spent a hundred bucks on buying all of these oxygen absorbers and much to poor Jonathan's chagrin. But we just roll um, with this. It kind of made me happy because I have been using Pat Fresh USA because when I tried them, I thought that they were the best. I'm like, hey, these are working really fast, but I hadn't done an experiment. So it was just kind of like, oh, I think this one's really working good. This is what I like. But I was really surprised because while some of the other ones definitely are in the running, the Pat Fresh USA, it was, it sucked in really fast. That was another thing. It worked faster. And that could have something to do with the permeability of you know, sure. The package, that that may have that may be somewhat or, different. Yeah. But I was I was super pleased. I wouldn't use the little ones because you're gonna have to put so many in. Now this is I don't know. This is what we're thinking from what we see and what we're gonna do. I like I said I'm not a scientist so I don't know. I'm just a mom. Yeah. So I know mom things. And I think it's important to point out here, there will be some minor variations as you Always. do these. And sometimes it's not going to suck in as much and it's going to be just fine because it's done its job. Because remember, we're talking mostly nitrogen with a little bit of oxygen. So, you know, it may not, you might not see that big a difference, but some of these were, like I said, a little disturbing to me that they were not, and it was the smaller ones. And the other thing I like about the bigger ones is, okay, maybe you've got more capacity than you need. And I think some of these are designed that way. When you oversize them, yes. And then you've got that reserve capacity. And then if you open that and close it again, that will pick up and, and remove more oxygen. Because once it pulls out all the oxygen, that process stops, but there's still capacity there. Okay, so what do you do if you're like, <gasps> mine's not looking like it should. I would just snip off the corner, stick another oxygen absorber in there, a fresh one. We always want to make sure that they're, they're good. If, if they've been sitting out, these have been sitting out for five days, these aren't going to do anything for you yeah, now. So you've got done. to have good fresh ones. So snip off the corner, put another one in there, and then just heat seal it. If you are just doing the zip on the Mylar bags, remember that is not airtight. You have to heat seal it in order to maintain an oxygen-free environment. And that's, you know, Mylar bags are great. I personally truly love my bottles. Um, we do a lot in our bottles, but this was a really good experiment for yeah. us. In order for the oxygen absorbers to work, you have to maintain an airtight container. Mylar is great at that, but some of them have a zip seal. If you've only zipped it and you haven't heat sealed it, that is not airtight and you are going to lose air over time. Um, so make sure that you are always heat sealing the mylar. Now I'm going to show you really quick what happens if you've lost the seal. So some people are concerned that there might be holes in their mylar and then they're not going to do a good job. Well, it's really easy to tell if you have a hole in your mylar because all it takes is one little, and you hear that and immediately, do you see how the bag is softening up? It was hard. You hear that little seal and then in just a couple seconds, it's all... Again. And I think it's important to point out that most mylar, sometimes there'll be little, what looks like holes, little light, you can put it to the light and you can see it, but most of the time that mylar is still intact. It's just a little uh, imperfection in the foil that's inside the layers of mylar. So the best option that you have is just to get it from a reputable company. Make sure that you're buying quality and then you don't have to worry about it because there have been horror stories. And seeing these oxygen absorbers at work, I'm like, oh, I understand those horror stories. So yeah. we're going to be doing a little bit of repair to some of these. Right. But I hope that was enlightening for you. Don't get ripped off. Make sure you know what you're buying. We will leave a link to the one that we really like that we've, we totally trust this company, but we've been on a journey of some that just didn't work as well. And that's one of the things that has, has taught us if you've got lousy oxygen absorbers, double up on them and please store food. I, however you choose to do it. I think now is a really good time to make sure that you've got a backup food supply. Absolutely. Now for the question of the day, what questions do you still have about oxygen absorbers? And what success or failure stories can you share? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.